Hello everybody and welcome to Merlin Reviews. It's uh, kind of a movie review vlog. There were a couple films I saw recently that I, I wanted to kind of discuss and so this will be one of two coming out within a pretty short period of time. Uh, I want to let you guys know uh, I saw Glass recently. I saw it, uh, I think, was it a day? I think about two days ago now. So I had to really mull it over. And for those of you that don't know, Glass is a sequel to Unbreakable and also Split was kind of a secret twist that it was actually that the two movies were connected so that was pretty cool for uh, Unbreakable fans it's kind of one of those films that I mean I've always felt and a lot of people have always felt is easily one of Shyamalan's best and obviously he had kind of a run where a lot of people didn't really like his work for a while because they were often very silly and honestly kind of dumb at points and uh, the twists were always really kind of annoying and often out of nowhere so, uh, when Split came out, you know, it was kind of considered by a lot of people to sort of uh, be a return of form for Shyamalan. And I agreed, I really liked Split. And to see that it was connected and unbreakable, they were in the same universe and superpowers could really be a thing, I actually thought that was pretty awesome at the time. So, not too long after that, they announced that Split, uh, that a Glass was going to be made, it was going to be a, a follow-up to both movies. And so, I saw it, it was actually probably the first movie this year that I had any real anticipation for seeing. And the trailers, honestly, made it look really intriguing. Um, and I really am kind of fascinated with the art of making trailers and how interesting they really make them. Uh, but as far as the movie goes, um, before I get really into spoilers, because it's kind of impossible to really delve into it without too many spoilers, uh, basically let you guys know there were some things I liked about the movie, uh, some character stuff, and I really liked the way it was shot. I'll go into that a little more later, but uh, in terms of kind of resolving the trilogy, which it basically does, I was very, very disappointed and unsatisfied, and uh, quite frankly, it made me very angry. Uh, <laughs> so that's my non-spoiler section. If you really liked Unbreakable uh, specifically, but Split 2, I think you should just think of those as two separate movies and kind of move on, unless you're really, really curious. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't really advise people to go seek it out, honestly. And that's coming from somebody who's a pretty big fan of those two particular Shyamalan films. But... Uh, basically, you know, uh, I won't, I know a lot of people reviewed this movie already, so I won't go too much into plot, but basically it follows David Dunn, also the Horde, James McAvoy's character, uh, and now David Dunn's aware of his existence, and he's kind of, he's been a superhero now, basically secretly uh, fighting small crime for a long time. He's known as the Overseer or the Green Guard, and he's working with his son, and they have kind of a low-key superhero thing going on. It's kind of interesting, and uh, I'm, basically the beast is on the run he's the horde uh, he's kidnapped some girls and David Dunn is on his trail and it's good guy versus bad guy pretty basic and then they get captured by this psychiatrist who specializes in treating people with the delusion that they're superheroes and then they find out that Mr. Glass Samuel Jackson's character Elijah is has been in that asylum for years and he's heavily sedated and so they're all basically together in that hospital and they're all going through their trauma and kind of linking it to the idea that they might have had these events that made them delve into this particular delusion and they all kind of have that. And that was kind of interesting because it was delving with the idea that everything that's happened in Unbreakable and Split is kind of on the cusp of what could actually happen. So it was interesting to play with that idea and it is kind of trying to be this sort of meta subtextual idea about what superheroes mean in modern society. But that's also the thing, it's kind of critiquing it in the same way as it did when Unbreakable came out and comic book formula wasn't really that popular, like using concepts like limited edition and talking about the big showdown between the hero and villain. It's like, uh, people, people know what that means. So it was really weird. There really weren't that many references to the modern landscape of superheroes. It felt very much like it was closer to how he would have made it back in the day. But anyway, it turns out that... Uh, Elijah, Mr. Glass, has been kind of fooling everybody. He's not really sedated. He's not really in a near coma. He's been planning this for a long time, and now he sees that the Horde is a true way for David to really test his abilities as a superhero. And so he said, okay, I'm going to break us all out and pit us together. And he plans to have him attack this biggest building so that, ah, you know, they will know we exist. He's kind of, uh, I guess, trying to be somewhat sympathetic in that sense. Like, he's a really evil guy, but he does just kind of want people to know that people with great power can exist to give people hope, but obviously he's going about it the wrong way, and he's fully taken into account that he is the superhero in this role, like he's okay with that. And um, and basically, he plans for them to have the showdown in this building, but it 
ends up happening in the parking lot, which I guess in retrospect, I was a little disappointed about, but I guess if they're trying to keep it to reality, okay, these guys don't have their big showdown at a big building later of a superhero movie, but it's really gritty in the parking lot. Okay. Uh, and up until that point, I'm like, okay, it's been a slow burn, a lot of long, slow shots, uh, a lot of dialogue, some of it kind of repetitive, um, but I was interested. There was some interesting character stuff. The performances were mostly pretty good. Um, Samuel Jackson's really good. Uh, James M. McAvoy, of course, has to play like a dozen different personalities, so he's good. Sarah Paulson, who plays the psychiatrist, was good. Everybody's giving it a pretty good uh, attempt, except for Bruce Willis, who seems kind of just there, but he's trying a little bit. But, yeah. So, uh, basically, <laughs> uh, it gets to that point until multiple twists happen. Uh, spoiler, 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 where uh, it turns out that Mr. Glass, the train that he used to derail that proved that uh, David Dunn was unbreakable, so to speak, that he had super abilities. It's also the same train that killed uh, Kevin, the whore's father, which in turn caused his mother to lose her mind and become really abusive, abusive which in turn created the whore's various personalities and his idea to like basically save people who are haven't experienced any kind of trauma because they're pure, because he's you know trying to deal with all his nonsense. Well, not nonsense, his real issues. But... So there's that twist, which I'm like, okay, that's kind of interesting. And then the real big one is that Sarah Paulson actually isn't really a psychiatrist, but she's part of this big secret organization that exists to suppress the knowledge of superheroes. And so they all actually did have abilities, but they all die. They all die. And they don't go out in particularly glorious or interesting ways, and it doesn't feel like their themes of their character arcs have been completed or anything. They don't even really get great monologues to go out in any great fashion. Except for Kevin, who's the uh, girl from Splits there, and she has some weird Stockholm Syndrome where she wants to help him. And before he dies, he gets shot by, like, one guy, by one of the snipers that works for this organization. One shot to the gut, he's dying, and he's like, oh, you know, I finally have overcome the pain, I can... I can be myself, and he, he actually has the only real satisfying arc because he is kind of saved before he dies, so I'm like, okay, I can kind of live with that. But then, uh, you know, but then, he, he before that, when he found out what, what Elijah did to his father, he punched Mr. Glass in the chest, and he dies, so that's not really grand. And the most offensive thing is that David Dunn, because he just got thrown into a water barrel, and his water barrel, and his weakness is water, this one SWAT team guy, this one cop, who they say one line that he's weak, he just literally hold his head, holds his head over a puddle and drowns him before he even really gets to say or do anything. Like the hero of Unbreakable, the hero of this trilogy, like, he dies. And not in a great way. And I guess, okay, this is once again subverting expectations, but the arc doesn't even feel completed. Like, what was the point? It felt so mean-spirited and so out of nowhere. Plus, we don't know anything about this organization. And what's worse... A little after that, it turns out that, ah, there's one more twist. Mr. Glass actually, when he was being recorded all the time in that hospital, found a way to actually upload all those images of what happened and get it out to the world. So now people do know they're superheroes, and woo, that changes things. But the thing that frustrated me the most about the movie is that you could have still had a more traditional story without introducing that whole twist and still got the same message across, without killing off all those characters, which I was okay with maybe one or two of them dying, but at least feel like their story was complete. It just kind of feels like it, was, it wasn't properly handled in that sense. So I was very disappointed because I, I liked seeing the characters, but I didn't really like how they ended up, and it's kind of similar to how I felt about The Last Jedi, where I didn't like the direction they took some characters because it just didn't feel satisfying to me. I know, the, I know they're his characters, and he can resolve the story if he wants to, uh, and I guess when he said the whole thing was an origin story, it's like an origin story for the idea that we can all accomplish great things. Like, I get the idea, but for the story, like, you spend so much time invested with these movies, it's like, it feels like he wanted to have the storyline from Split and then added the unbreakable elements. And so those characters, even though they have good moments, they're not really in the movie that much. I mean, David Dunn doesn't really get that many lines at all, probably the least of any of them. And Mr. Glass... His name is the movie. You think it's going to be about him. He's barely in the movie. Like, it, it just was... It was really disappointing. Um, it might be worth a rewatch. Like, I really will say I liked the way it was shot. 
I thought there was some really cool cinematography and editing. I liked the performances. I liked some of the ideas they explored with these characters, but I didn't think it was resolved in the best way it could have been. So I was pretty disappointed because Unbreakable is really one of my favorite movies. Um, I think it's a very unique superhero movie and has a lot of good ideas, but it just seems like they they kind of were snuffed out a little bit in this one. Like there were just too many ideas juggling two different movies. That one twist was unnecessary and lacks a lot of punch because there was no foreshadowing in any movie or in this movie about it at all. So it's like, it's just kind of a bad twist. And like I said, it makes you feel like you're almost being punished for liking those characters. Like it, it's just, like I'm okay with characters dying, but for all of them to die in such a, uh, just such an unimpressive way and with two of them not even really feeling like their arcs were fully completed, especially what happened to David Dunn, which I just thought was insulting and unbelievable. It was, it just didn't make you feel good. And I'm like, you know, I know it's supposed to be dark and gritty, but man, I, I didn't think it was particularly well written. But there were some good things about it, but I would not recommend it. I was very disappointed in it. But if you guys did see Glass, uh, what did you think about it? How did it resolve the issues from the other movies? Uh, just let me know in the comments below. But yeah, that's how I felt about Mr. Glass. I was very frustrated about it. Oh, man. Very disappointing. I'm kind of was like, you know, when it came out of it, I'm like, take Unbreakable and split as their own movies and just pretend this one doesn't exist. I know that might not be the best way to look at it, but that's, I think it, it could potentially hurt the other movies, but ah, disappointing. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Stay magical.